Hello, my name is Sarah, and in today's video, I'm gonna tell you how you can make such an incredible character that is entirely original and immediately tells you a story. Whenever I try to make original characters in the past, I always felt like there's something missing. My character drawings would look so rigid, so much so that I couldn't see any life or rhythm in them. So I felt like my character drawing was just a huge failure. And after some time, I got an idea. I thought to myself, what if I study all of my favorite artists' work and try to dissect every element of their characters and then write them down exactly what sort of element of their art I really love and am gravitated toward, what is unique and pleasant about their artwork. You know, a kind of in-depth study on their storytelling when it comes to characters and specific shapes that they use to convey those stories within their characters. Which has been the beginning of my journey to original characters, so I took a lot of inspiration from other artists and tried to implement it in my own artwork. There was certain features that I loved about most of their artwork and started to take notes as to what specifically I would like to borrow from their artwork. It could be the texture they're using or a certain quality like the color harmony or their color palette. It could also be the structure of their drawings and certain shapes they use to make those characters. I started to also try to explore by just drawing on my own. Not using any reference or inspirations, I just went on practicing on my own. And it felt like a huge discomfort. I felt like I couldn't remember exactly what the structure looked like or what certain features looked like. I was staring at a blank page, literally just moving my arm to make some scribbles on the page. And in that moment, I realized that I have the worst memory. Beside the blankness of the page of my sketchbook, there was a huge blank space in my mind too. It's funny, but I couldn't even draw a simple flower or a heart shape. It was like I was completely deluded about my drawing abilities up until that point in time. It felt like I was hit by a huge block of ice. All of my confidence, all of my drawing skills suddenly evaporated right in front of me. There was not a single strand of thought that would be likely to calm me down in that situation. I felt like my whole artistic life was just a lie. I started to scribble and scribble as if I was objecting to this bizarre conundrum. I started not caring about what the outcome of my practices are, simply because I was in distress. I just wanted to relieve my anxiety. And the only thing that I found to be helping was the idle scribbling and doodling in my sketchbook. I started to draw so many circles. I kept filling up my sketchbook by drawing circles after circles until I noticed something strange. I took a look at the previous pages and compared it to my current page and it wasn't the same. It was completely different. The lines on my current page was much more confident and cohesive than the lines on the previous pages. I started to see some progress. Even though I wasn't drawing anything specific, I was just drawing circles and symbol shapes. But in those simple structures, I could see that I am getting more and more articulate. My lines and shapes were a lot more cohesive and flowy. They looked so natural compared to my previous line. They felt authentic, like one of the pros. So I got really interested and started to think, what if I start drawing characters and objects too? Would this still be true? And that was when 
when my journey of independent drawing began. I started to pick a sketchbook and draw every day. It was becoming a habit. I would make myself a cup of iced latte and sit at my desk and start filling the sketchbook with drawings of all kind. And the sketchbook itself had become an explorational place for me. I would just start drawing something without even planning for it beforehand. I started to notice that whenever I let the pencil to take over, my drawing would look more natural and pro-like. It felt surreal. I would start drawing without even knowing what I wanted to draw. The pencil would draw for me and it would not be tiring at all. Even though I had been sitting at my desk for hours, I felt no sign of creative fatigue or depletion of ideas. Absolutely no sign of any mental hardship. If anything, it was becoming easier and easier. I started to have fun by changing some elements of my drawings and altering my style here and there. I started to experiment with so many art style of other artists as well. And my practices would look like this. I would start scribbling on the page very lightly and then out of those random lines I would see some shapes and potential base for my characters. Then I would start to go over them much more and make them obvious. Out of that jumble of lines, a character would magically appear because my artistic brain was so much more comfortable with a messy start than a perfectionistic blankness. It was wild. I figured what my problem was. I was always afraid of making the tiniest mistake and whenever it happened, I would immediately erase them, so much so that correcting had become a strong drawing habit of mine. Until I started to put my perfectionism aside and started with a messy spiral of lines. I got rid of all of my erasers, never used them in my practices. No erasing, no correcting. Every mistake should be looked at in a creative way. And you might not even believe me, but those messy lines that I called them errors before, they started to become the initiator for more creative and interesting style in my art. Instead of seeing them as a hurdle, I started to use them as a tool for novelty. Just because they are not what we normally do doesn't mean they are mistakes. They could be a potential feature for your style, like a collage that you put different parts of different objects and they all come together to give a unique mood or a creative outlook. The same was happening in my drawing practices. I was building my style through my unique mistakes and honing it in the process to find my true art style. I would highly recommend you doing this as well. You only need to get rid of your eraser and start your drawing by light scribbles on the page. If you do these two, then you're on your way to find your true style. Another tip that is extremely useful for character drawing is knowing your character's story. Try using symbolic elements, colors, and shapes to build a story within the characters themselves. When you are drawing, don't be afraid of using a strong shape or a hard edge shape to give your character their unique flavor and traits. Another useful tip would be to draw your character from every side. Start drawing the same character over and over, try to make it all look like one character by determining its basic elemental features. If you dedicate every five pages of your sketchbook to one character, then you will notice that you're much more aware of your flaws when it comes to character drawing from every side. You start to find ways to incorporate all of the certain traits that your character has and repeat them in every move your character makes. And finally, keep innovating. Don't be stiff and rigid. Let the pencil do the job for you. Thank you so much for watching. If you think this video was useful, then give this video a thumbs up as it often helps the video to be seen. You can also watch this video right here if you want to. And I hope that I can see you in the next video. Have a nice week.